Now we are going to talk about master data. Master data. Master data is everywhere. We see master data all around us. For example, if you go to Safeway, you go buy a bunch of products, right? You go buy some soap, you go buy whatever. And then you go to the billing counter, all your items are scanned, and you'll be asked if you have a rewards card. Right? So this is uh, a card that you'll be given whereby your discounts will be cumulatively added. And if you don't have one, they'll uh, give one right away. What does a rewards card have? A rewards card has your name, address, and some other personal details about you that they think are relevant uh, for your purchase. This right here is master data. You can also call it as customer master. Okay, because you're a customer in this case and Safeway is the company or the vendor which is selling you these products. Another example is when you take this product, let's say you go buy a piece of bread or buy uh, a bottle of milk and uh, when you go to the counter these products are scanned and when they're scanned just one little scan can reveal a whole bunch of information about that product what kind of information could that be some examples of that information could be product name For example, bread, the particular model of the bread, sourdough, or uh, you know, plain bread, milk bread, whatever. And then a product description and a price for that product and any discounts that are given on that product, any cumulative discounts that are given on that product because you're purchased beyond a certain quantity or value, right? This is master data right here. This is called data related to material. And so it's called material master data. And this, you can call them as pricing master data. So master data is everywhere really. If you want, I can take another example. We go to Amazon and uh, you go log in, right? So you have your user ID and password. As soon as you log in, um, you can go to your account anytime you want. So when you go to your account, you'll have details like name, address. In fact, you can have multiple addresses like one address in Kansas, one address in Texas, or anywhere you've been, you can store all your different addresses and you can store your credit cards or debit cards, different credit cards and different debit cards. See, all of this is master data. And in this case, you are the customer, so you can call it as customer master data. Right? So these are all common examples of master data that you typically see in B2C environments. All along, we've been only seeing B2C environments, right? The Safeway example or the Amazon.com example. All of these are B2C examples. Let's take a more B2B example. Let's say HP is a company that's implementing SAP and uh, the company that's buying from HP is let's say Best Buy. Now, Best Buy places an order for let's say computers or whatever products that HP sells and HP creates an order. The order is something like this. It's got a header, right? So it's got a header and it's got line items, let's say one, two, three, however many. These are line items. 
on the header what kind of information does it have it has the customer information of course and that's best buy in this case the next thing is tax classification see commercial customers are taxable whereas government customers are typically non taxable non profits are non taxable also so taxable tax classification in this case is yes taxable and what kind of a customer is he? is he a corporate customer or is he a government customer or any other type of classification that hp wants to classify their customers as and in this case it's a corporate customer or you can call it a retail customer and uh, can we ship all the goods together yes or no it's an option that best buy gives right in this case being a customer and address to which we need to ship the goods to and if there are issues which phone number to call to who will be paying for this transaction uh, where should the bill be sent to see these are all things that are captured at the header level now similarly at the line item level what do we have we have details like material let's say it's a computer model 101 and the weight is let's say 5 key 5 pounds and the volume is so much you know all this information is going to be used in um, you know computing the freight and uh, you know how the packet should be sent and all that stuff and which plant is it going to send the goods out of let's say it's sent out of the san francisco plant and sim similarly tax classification sometimes some goods some materials are taxable and some materials are not this set of details at the header level right where you say the customer is so-and-so, his tax classification is so-and-so, you know, this is the type of customer, and this is where uh, the customer wants to ship the goods to, blah, blah, blah. You can consider this as data pertaining to the customer, right? And similarly, this is data pertaining to the material. That's it. That, that, that You can define that as master data right so basically master data in this case is a bunch of properties related to a customer or a material so how do we define master data in general you know there, there need not just be a customer and material there are other examples that we are going to see in a moment so what is master data so master data is um, at its very fundamental uh, level a collection of properties of an object. Objects in this case could be customers, materials, vendors, assets, any of these. Also, typically this kind of data is created only once meaning you don't create them again and again and again for example in the previous case uh, when Best Buy was created as a customer you don't create Best Buy again and again and again it's just one Best Buy and that's it it's created once but like I said it's used again and again right and because it's created once you rarely change it it's changed occasionally or it's very rarely changed okay and it's also the source main source of data in transactions you take any transaction sales order delivery billing purchase order transfer order um, even posting to accounts any kind of transaction uh, typically has the bulk of the data coming in from the master data in the previous example we have seen some data that's coming from uh, the customer master in this case all this data is going to come from the customer master and at the line item level the data is going to come from the material master
How about some examples of master data? Well, we have already seen some examples, like we have seen customer was one example, so customer master data. And then we have seen material as an example, material could be a master data. Another example could be vendor. Another example could be pricing master data. Another example is your asset master. And the list goes on and on. There are like, you know, close to five or 10 different types of master data that we typically, you know, refer to as master data. Although uh, conceptually you can, uh, there are other examples. These are typically represented in, in ERPs as master data. Um, for the SD consultant, um, this is the master data that's relevant. Customer. This is the main master data that SD consultant is worried about. An MM consultant is worried about the material master and the vendor master because they, they typically own the material master and vendor master is of course primarily the, the domain of the uh, material master. Pricing condition records are typically taken care of both by SD and MM consultants, even CRM consultants. Asset master is taken care of by the finance consultant and so on. So these are some examples of master data.